I've had a lot of comments saying this project is huge, I'd love to make one, it's too overwhelming, it's daunting, will you ever get it done, will you see it through? And all of those comments, mainly, most of those comments, if not the majority, if not all of them, are definitely thoughts and feelings I've had myself, whether they are fleeting or whether they sit there for a while. I have thought, this is going to take forever, I want to make something else, why did I start this, I'm never going to get this done. And then I sort of sit there and say to myself, hang on a minute, look how much progress you have made. Welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 29 from the United Kingdom and this channel of mine is documenting my journey as a crochet designer and an all-round maker as I concentrate on simplifying my life and being more thrifty. So if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Right now we're at 995 subscribers. 995 I'm so close to the thousand it's crazy so thank you all of you for being here for subscribing and if you're brand new hi hello welcome to the tribe and click subscribe 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 to get us over that 1000 mark okay today's vlog is a sit down chat with you vlogcast I haven't done one of these for a couple of weeks, months maybe? It's been a while. Um, the last vlog that went out was on this little number and it is my um, sewing machine that I've sticker bombed. Um, and since then I've actually added a few more. So I finally put the ampersand on for the and and I've also put my initials underneath. So it says making moments and memories, which is my little tagline, my mantra. Um, so maybe I should change my introduction to welcome to HGDC, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my channel all about, this is my channel documenting my crochet journey and making moments and memories. I think that would be good to do. I think we'll do that next time. Okay. Um, so yes, I vlogged about that. It was my moment of... Well, it wasn't madness. I'd thought about it for a while. Emma from Steel and Stitch has got all sorts of stickers all over her sewing machine. I really wanted to do it to mine. And as I'm going through a really big D stash and I'm getting rid of all of my stickers, I thought it'd be good to use a load of them up on this. So you can go back and watch that. I put the, um, it's up here somewhere, you can click. Um, and the week before that, I showed you some of my vlog footage of the granny square curtain I'm making and that curtain is for this room and so I thought I would vlog in this room today. This is my bedroom. Welcome to my bedroom everyone. Um, I am going through a process of merging HG, HGDC HQ which was the room I had dedicated to all my yarny and making stuff into here because Long story short, I don't need that much space. I want to be surrounded by the stuff I love. I love waking up and seeing all of this yarn. Um, so my bed is just there. I have this huge, huge storage, which goes all the way up to the ceiling, which you definitely can't see. But after this shelf, there's another two. Um, and then it's got all of these stuff behind me, my overlocker, my sewing machine, my Darcy bear. Um, because I don't think I ever announced on the channel but Darcy passed away so his bear is here and it's got his tag on it um, so he, he usually lives on my bed but then every now and then he goes on here just so he's safe so he's there at the moment um, sewing machine 
lots of yarn. This is all sort of whips, projects I'm working on, and my yarn winder. And then the next one up, which I know you can't see, but I'll insert pictures, is more yarn. And the one above is my blanket stack, um, which I know you all love to see in that video. It's my most viewed video. Um, and then here off camera, I have another storage tower, not as big as this, with all my DK in it. Well, I say all of, I still haven't put this lot away, which is in my resting knit face um, bag from Stephen and Penelope. But the majority of it's there. Um, still working with it in here. I think this unit is going to get changed at some point. If I don't change it, I'm going to move it over on the far wall. Um, so yeah, it's still a work in progress. I decided to vlog in here because I'm going to show you the progress I've made on the curtain. Um, so as you can see, this room is all white, but it's really colourful because of all my crochet and my yarn. So, the last you saw my mini, well, my mini, let's get this right, my mini granny square curtain, I was on row six, I had the ends to sew in on rows five and six, and I was going to make a huge stash of centres to add into that, and that was back on the 4th of September that I, um, that's the last day, day's worth of vlog footage that you saw and today which i should have told you already is the 20th of sep 21st of september so quite a bit of time has passed um i'm not gonna work out how many days but quite a bit of time almost 20 days so i have made quite a bit of progress um i did vlog a little bit of footage from the fourth up until now so I'm going to put that in here now so that you're up to date. Hey tribe, it is the 10th of September and it's about quarter past six and I'm showing you all my piles, <laughs> which sounds a little bit dodgy. I'm showing you all of my centres for my mini granny squares to add to my curtain. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a pile now. Well, stacks of piles. I don't actually know how many are here. So that's going to be the next job. I am going to count these up and let you know. <laughs> I should do some sort of um, guess how many centres. <laughs> like what they do on a tombola. Okay, I'm going to count these up. And then I'm going to take the actual curtain with me. It's still on row six. It still needs two rows worth of end sewing in and I haven't actually worked on the curtain itself since I think it was last Tuesday a week ago today um, because that is when I vlogged about fixing the little hole and I was debating whether to frog 11 squares and in actual fact I fixed it um, and then that night I added on the sixth row yeah I did and then I decided to make these centres um haven't had a lot of crochet time in the last week um normally I'd spend like 10 minutes before work at least and then a good hour in the evening but I've been doing extra hours at work which means I've been leaving the house super early um and not getting back till late so there hasn't been the usual crochet time but having said that, I have done all of these centres. So I'm going to count them up because I am intrigued. Um, let's see how many I've got. Okay, tribe, I've just quickly counted them and there's a hundred in there. And I've got all of these. What do you reckon? Do you think I've made too many? Um, I mean, I calculated that I needed 525. And I've used six rows, which is, so I've used 50, 100, 200, 300, have I really? No, you do not. You've used 100, you've used, have I really used 300? I must have calculated that wrong. Wronger than wrong. Hmm. Let me see. Oh, goodness. 
300 and I still have those little bits left. Um, so yeah, I might have made way too many. Don't they look great? And don't worry, if I have too many, it just means I'll make another granny square project and we all know that I am not opposed to doing that. So I put 300, let me count this last little amount. And then I'm gonna re-measure that window and work out exactly how many squares I think I'll need. And I'll get back to you. 363 centers. And then I've used Let's count it. Twenty-five fifty. So that's oh, you nugget. Twenty-five fifty. So then that's another fifty. So hundred, a hundred and fifty. Oh, and then I've got three hundred and sixty-three. So. So I was being a complete donut when I was calculating this. And for some reason in my head, even though I knew each row was 25, I was adding each row up as if it was 100. I don't know why I was doing that. I don't know where that's come from. I'm just going to say it's been a long day. So with the 150 I've got here, 6 times 25 is 150, plus the 363 I've got here, I need to make 12 more centres and I've got every single centre I need for my curtain. Oh my goodness, it's kind of just hit home just how much work I've got to do. Oh, but imagine when all of that is on that. Wowza. So, 12 more centres and then I've got all of my centres and from now on it's just going to be adding to my skewer, which is here. And then, <laughs> I just got to add each row, which does make me feel a bit better. And it does go to show that doing little bits, you know, I've done on my lunch break, I've cranked out maybe 30 centres. Um, I've come home and in between doing adulting jobs, I've sat and done 10 centres. If I'm out and about, I've took a little bit with me and I might have managed to do five centres. Just by doing that over the process, over the, yeah, over the course of a week, I've now got almost all of the centres bar 12, which I can quickly whip out now. And then that means I've got pure crochet time of just adding them in. So I'm actually quite looking forward to that. And it means that all this yarn here and there can go away in the stash and make this room look a little bit tidier. So that's also another good thing. Um, so my time talking to you is eating into the time that I should be eating. So I'm going to grab a snack to go and then I'm going to rush off to church. But that's okay because I can sit and sew those ends in when I'm there. So I mustn't forget that. Um, yeah, I don't know why I was adding those up. I was adamant that I'd done 50 per row. So I was on like 300 squares. And that's why I was thinking I don't have enough there. But I think I do. I am just going to double check because when I held this up against the window, I felt like it should be a bit wider than what it was. Um, yeah, so I'll double check the calculations and then I'm not far off finishing all the squares. I mean, 12 is great. If I have to add another X amount of rows, I'm not that far, am I? So the curtain is closer to getting done and once this colourful bag of centres is emptied that means this is done okay I gotta rush catch you later so as you can see I have I have made a huge stack of squares centres um to be made into squares and I have I only got 12 more to make and then I've got enough for every single row and that tub when I showed you it was jam packed, rammed full, and I felt like I felt like there was so much to do. And I'm actually gonna say now that quite a few people have commented and said to me, I'd love to do a project like that, but it takes too much time, that it's daunting, that it's overwhelming, that it'll never get done. 
and I really have felt all of those feelings along the way so I have sort of thought how am I going to get through this There's so much to do I'm going to get bored I don't want to do this and some of those sort of thoughts have been fleeting a few things that I have just kept in my mind is the time is going to pass anyway whether I sit and work on this project I don't work on a project or I work on a million others that time is going to pass and so if I only have 10 minutes a day if I only spend that 10 minutes a day on this project I am going to see steady progress and that is how those all of those centers built up is that when I had 10 minutes I sat and worked on it um, and also in terms of the daunting and the overwhelm I really think that comes from looking too far into the future so you really get stuck in your in your feels and you're in you're really feeling this project's too much it's going to take too long I'm going to get bored but I love to crochet I love the process of planning a project and I love the process of making it and so although this is a lengthy a lengthy project it just means I'm getting more enjoyment from it and I do really really think that sometimes we're a victim of that social media instant sort of junk feelings so you, when you get likes you get a hit of dopamine and you get that junk feeling of oh you know I've done something good look at this is my reward and sometimes I think we look too hard for that in our projects and the things we're making and sometimes we want that instant gratification um, and not all projects are like that and this one I'm really really enjoying and I do really think when it comes to feeling daunted and overwhelmed on a project it's because we're looking at how much we have left to do rather than what we've already done and so every time I sort of think oh this is taking ages I go back over the vlogs that I've put out for you all and I have a look and I realise that in such a short space of time I've done so much and then looking at that I sort of realised, well it more just reinforced that if you only have 10 minutes a day but if you use that 10 minutes consistently on a project you will make progress and that progress over time really does add up. I have made so much progress on this project which I'm going to show you um, and the feelings of sort of I want to make something else that is just the um your inner chimp your inner voice saying oh but look at that shiny object oh look at that shiny object and I have had lots of that I have had lots of projects pop into my mind and I'm thinking I have to do it and I drop everything and do it and then what I actually do is I write it out in my journal I've swatched for a couple of things but then I just continue on with this project and I am really, really enjoying it and I'm getting a huge sense of achievement from seeing this project through, not that it's done yet, but for how far I've come with it, as opposed to maybe a smaller project where you get that instant hit because it's done, but then you're like, what do I make next? Um, so if you want to make a bigger project but you feel overwhelmed, I really, really would suggest that you go a little bit easier on yourself, um, you maybe commit to 10 minutes a day making progress on it, that you don't put a deadline on yourself and you just enjoy the process of making it because it would be very very easy for me to sink into a, a sort of mindset of this is taking too long, I'm not making enough progress, um, it's still not done but in actual fact if you just go easy on yourself, um, enjoy the making split it down into sections so I have um, done two rows at a time I've sewed the ends in I've also split it down by making all of the centers I pick out a row at a time that I'm gonna add so I really have simplified the process and in a way I have made it a system but it is so so enjoyable so if you want to make two round granny square projects out of these go for it and do it because look at what I have done now when you in the last vlog footage I showed you I'd made all of my centers and I'd put them in my clear tub which is just here I'm just getting it ready for you I don't want you to see 
and that clear tub which i'm just dipping up now was ram packed full of all of the scenters that i'd made 360 out of them and it only needed 12 more ram packed right and that was back on i think that was about the seventh or something i don't know it was quite early on and now look that's all that's left that small amount this is how much progress i have made so when i did fill this up i did feel slightly overwhelmed and i did think this is going to take forever and there's so many things i want to make and then i just thought stick with it the time is going to pass anyway whether i spend six weeks making this or six weeks dabbling in other projects but that time is still going to pass but i know if i stick to this i'm going to have a finished project at the end of it also helps that it's getting a lot darker in the evenings and I really want a curtain. Okay, are you ready? This is the project bag it's living in. It's my Harry Potter one. It's got all of this um, newsprint about magic. Um, it's all Harry Potter news line, news lines, headlines. And it was made by Josie Rose. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram. Um, she makes some really, really great stuff. And at the moment, she's making these project bags that are like clear with confetti and glitter. So cool. And I've got all of my badges on there. That one's upside down. That, some are Harry Potter related. So that one says 10 points to Gryffindor. There's Harry. There's my Deathly Hallows yarn. Uh, Gryffindor Prefect. I've got my brother's racing badge. Mitchell Griffith Racing and all sorts of other bits and bobs on there. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Check this bad boy out. It's so big! So big. So I am now on row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 and part way through row 14 um and i was going to add i was going to do 25 rows so i am well over halfway um in actual fact i'm even further than that because i also have another bit here that's almost two rows as well um reason being is because this is quite big it's not too big that i can't take it with me because it folds up relatively small but I like to crochet on the bus and this is a lot more manageable to carry around day to day than this when you've got a gym kit and your your work clothes and your food bag um, so I've got the two on the go and these will get joined at some point um, so for this one that's the rest of the row um, and then I've got all of these plus 12 more I need to make and then it'll be done. So now rather than doing two rows and sewing the ends in, I'm doing more like four or five rows and sewing the ends in. Um, and to be honest, I get most of my ends sewn in at ch in church. So Sundays and Tuesdays I am in church and last Sunday I sewed the ends in on like five rows whilst um, listening to the message. And then I had got quite a bit done Sunday daytime um, Monday evening and then I sewed those ends in on the Tuesday and then I have now got seven rows worth that need sewing in so I've got plenty for tomorrow um, and probably Tuesday but yeah what do we think to it I think the colours look amazing um, I'm really really pleased with this and I'm really enjoying it because it is quite mindless um, because I pre-pick my rows out, so all I have to do is sit and sew them on, crochet them on, um, using the continuous join as you go method. There are very little ends. Um, if I had used the join as you go, I would have had two ends for each of the pink, but because I've done the continuous join as you go, it is honestly, that is the reason why I went ahead with this project. I, if I hadn't discovered that method, I wouldn't have done it. So, yeah i'm really really pleased with it um it's looking really really good really good so i have two stitch markers on the go um progress keepers i use them as when i'm crocheting 
because it's very easy for the board to get poured, um, especially when people come along and they're well-meaning, but they, they grab it and say, oh, I love that, look at that. And I just watch my yarn unravel and think, I've got three do those stitches. So now I am very careful to put a progress keeper on and it serves um, as a stitch marker because when I pick this up, I will attach it to this yellow and then I will join on a load of squares and then I'll put it away. And that's another way to show how much progress I have made because on a 25 minute bus journey, I'll get like at least half a row, if not more done. And it's really satisfying to take it from here and clip it on here and think, I have made progress. Um, so I'm just really taking the time to celebrate my daily progress as opposed to just focusing on the end goal of getting this done. Don't get me wrong, I want it done, but I'm really enjoying it. So, stitch marker one, the Deathly Hallows. <laughs> and stitch marker two, which I've never shown off on here. I don't know why I haven't. But it's Harry Potter themed and I love it. I've got my very own chocolate frog. And that was made by Thimble and Thread, I believe. And I brought it for myself um, back in April. And it came at a time when I was decorating. And so I carefully put it away in its packaging in a safe place. And then I moved everything around. And it wasn't until I started doing this um, rejig of my HQ that I rediscovered it. And so I thought it was really fitting to go on this project as it's in a HP bag with all the badges. And I've got my other progress keeper on here. And I just love it. I've always wanted a chocolate frog when I've been to Harry Potter World. But I don't, I try not to have milk in my diet. And I definitely haven't had dairy milk chocolate in almost two years now. So there's no point me buying one for it to sit there. Especially as I have the jelly beans that I've never eaten, I've never ate, never eat, never had, never consumed, and they've been on my shelf for almost five years. So I got a progress keeper instead. So I'm really, really, really pleased with it. And it's also at a weight now where it's quite warm to sit under. And I love snuggly projects that you can sit under. It's giving me the autumn feels. So I'm using this pound shop yarn, which is a glittery um, pink. It's a very pale, dusty pink. And I was worried that I was going to run out of it. And so I did go back to the pound shop and I brought another three, six, nine balls of it. Or was it six balls of it? I can't remember. I spent four pound. One, two, I got six balls of it for four pound and it's just their knitting essentials um, sparkle and it's three for two so I bought four and got two free in effect um, so I've got some of that all wedged in here and then I when I'm home or I'm going somewhere that isn't work basically I will take this when I'm going somewhere like work, I take this and this, and that goes in my tote bag. Um, wherever I go, my hooks go with me. So, what do you think? I am absolutely loving it, and I'm really, really pleased with the progress. And I can't believe how much progress I've made. It has grown massively. If you think that I filled this up with centres and now this is the size that it's at. It's also really nice and warm. So I'm, I am looking forward to having that up on my window because I think it will really help insulate my room. My room isn't that cold. Um, I just think it will really it'll just be really nice and snuggly. And it's going to look great up. Now, quite a few people have messaged say, oh, it might be too heavy. And that has been in my mind that it could be too heavy. If it is too heavy, I'm gonna try and line it with some material, like blackout material, and that should give it a bit of structure to help stop it stretching too much under its own weight. And I'm also gonna make quite chunky tabs and they can be lined as well. Um, if that doesn't solve the issue, I will just make this into a blanket for my bed. Um, 
it just means it's going to have to be a whole lot bigger. So I do hope that the curtain will work because otherwise I am going to pretty much make another 525 centres and double it and make it into a blanket for myself. I don't really need another blanket. I do love the colours though. And because I used a 3.5mm it, it is quite sturdy which I was a bit annoyed about at the start because I felt that that meant that I'd made more work for myself because there were smaller squares. If I'd have used a 5mm it would have been bigger but I do think it needs that structure. So yeah I'm really pleased with it. Um, I haven't worked on anything else but I have been planning projects um, and my Patreons have been receiving a lot of posts about that projects I want to work on um, sort of my autumn slash winter wardrobe um, bits and pieces that I've been buying from charity shops so if you're interested in that go ahead to my Patreon and sign up it works out at, I think it's two or three dollars um, a month but you get access to all my posts all my behind the scenes um, they get to see a lot more updates on this and when patterns come out they get them for free so if you want to join that tribe go ahead um one other thing that i have got to show you a couple new things that i've got and that is a couple of um, pattern books i love debbie bliss patterns i've never made one but i just love her stuff and i've picked these two up from ebay um and there's a couple of projects in each that i want to make one of them being this cabled cowl but because I can't just make a pattern I have to change them I think I would make that even bigger and I want to line it with fleece or make it smaller and line it with fleece I don't know there's so many options um, there there's some really really nice patterns in here um, and I've already got three or four of her pattern books and I've just got another two um, but I am I'm going to try and stop buying patterns because I have enough but I picked those up off eBay I think they cost me a pound each and then postage um, and I, I just love Debbie Bliss stuff and I have actually sat with all of my books and all of my magazines and I spent an evening just going through them, flicking through, putting post-it notes of things I might want to make and making a little list of my winter wardrobe for this year. So for more information on that, head over to Patreon. So now I'm going to rush off to a birthday party. I'm taking this with me and I'm going to add on the row and then I'm going to start sewing in the next lot of ends. So I will see you in a week's time. Um, I'm working on getting Stella, which is just here, that's Stella too. I'm working on getting her finished, lined, and all of the tutorials and the patterns out to you. And I really hope that I've gotten that done for um, next weekend. So click subscribe, come back, see if that's ready. Um, and then, yeah, I'll see you in a week's time. And by then we'll probably be over a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you again soon. Happy making moments and memories.